Hey, what's good guys? Welcome back to TechSmart for a classic episode of How Bad Is It? If you guys are new to this, I have two Galaxy S10 Pluses in front of me in EV. One of them's real, one of them's fake, but we're gonna find out how bad the fake one really is. Didn't think I was gonna catch it. Let's roll that intro. So if you're new, make sure you vote up in the iCard which device you think is real and which device you think is fake. We have device one and then device two. But what's interesting about this video is this fake costs $101. So if you wanna check it out, links down below. And the reason we make this is to make sure if you buy a used device on eBay, Craigslist, whatever it is, maybe a year from now, maybe three years from now, whenever you're watching it, you don't get scammed and you know what to look for. And here are just a few simple tests that you can put any device up to and basically find out what to look for. Here's your one-stop shop. So let's get to it for $101, which is real, which is fake. If you guys haven't seen any of the Galaxy S10 videos, I'll link that playlist right up there in the iCard. When this showed up, and this is the second one, there was some white stickers on it, obviously to get it to pass through customs. Don't actually know how this one showed up. I say it with every device and basically every video. But for $101, this is the fake one, and we're just gonna jump right in and see what we get. There was no slide, there was no top. This was basically it. Nope, like there, there's no jokes there. And this is what the device looks like. So if you find in any Galaxy S10 or S10 Plus with this kind of front sticker, and then of course the Olympic sticker on the back, you know it's not anything good that you wanna be getting yourself into or your money into. But with the three cameras right on the back, that's what we're gonna put to the test and see, with that being a new feature on the S10 and S10 Plus, how bad is it on $101? Accessories, this really thin piece of paper. Basic accessories included, it does charge with USB-C. With the fake S10, we're gonna put this one to the side and jump into the real one here. Seems like all the ones on eBay, that's who hooked it up this year with all the Samsung stuff. We're getting it, we're getting it. Don't even need a knife. So it seems like eBay and all the phones on there have this free SD card. So this is what an S10 box should look like. Same with the S10 Plus. Has the S10 kind of white stamp or whatever color device you have. It's color corresponding with the font. So Ev, white phone, plus, and here she is. So this is the prism white, not the ceramic one. That would be the move. You know what to expect. Wall brick, OTG, AKG headphones, and then a USB-C cable. With these clones and fakes, they're always getting better. So whenever you see this video, the link down in the description should stay updated. And for $101, you get to see the different colors and variations. So on this particular model, it is a 6.3 inch screen. And compared to the real Galaxy S10 Plus, that is a 6.4 inch screen. So that's just something to look out for. Eight gigabytes of storage with one gigabyte of RAM. It's always interesting to see what actually shows up. And for the colors, this is what caught my eye. It comes in gold. Gold isn't one of the colors they offer on the S10 Plus. It only comes in five colors that you'll probably see and then two ceramic versions that are a little more expensive. Prism white is what we have here and gold is not really an option. You have this canary yellow, but you can definitely tell it's a yellow and not a gold from what other models have had in previous years. So with that in mind, Ev, for $101, ooh, you can go all the way up to 16 gigs of storage takes an SD card, so of course you could expand it. 117 bucks, and then for full on tech specs, for features, gravity response. Um, don't you wanna know when gravity's working and when it's not working? It scares me every time. Wireless charger, back camera, Google Play Store, so we'll test all that out, and then you have Face ID. I think that's an iPhone feature. Interesting to see if they're gonna have the ultrasonic fingerprint, the in-screen fingerprint reader that the real S10 Plus has, because that's definitely a distinguishing feature. And well, we'll just jump right into it. I mean, I think the only thing really left to do is see how bad the fake clone really is. So with these screen protectors on there, you gotta take them off and it always seems to be just, I think time, but no one's really trying when they're trying to make these, making it look somewhat accurate. So obviously I got one in black. They don't make one in white. You guys saw it on the site. 
But with the three cameras, that's one of the big things to look for this year on the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus. If there's anything less than that, it is definitely a fake or it might be a Galaxy S10e. Probably not though if you're watching this video. So with this, nothing really else is on the back. You can tell the corners are really curved compared to the S10 Plus. Looking at the thickness, the fake is about one and a half times thicker. I'd say a little heavier than the real Galaxy S10. Things that you would definitely expect, you have your volume buttons on the side right there and then the Bixby button, everyone's favorite. And then what is kind of interesting is the power buttons, I would say near the cameras for sure, compared to the fake one, which is a little lower. And ooh, there isn't that hole punch in the screen. So that is one thing to definitely take into account. Now that both phones are unboxed, we're gonna put them to the test with three apps. The first one that is kind of a dead giveaway is if your Galaxy S10 or S10 Plus doesn't have the in fingerprint reader or the ultrasonic fingerprint. So that basically means instead of having face unlock, which both devices support, this one calls it face ID though, you can actually just rest your fingerprint at the lower third of your phone and it should unlock. So to find this, just diving into settings at the top, see if it's even supported. Going down to biometrics and security, fingerprints, add the pin, continue. And as you see on the screen, just resting your fingerprint up against the phone. The one thing I don't really like and why I've actually been using the S10e is the fingerprint readers on the power button, which is on the side of the phone versus in the screen. And for me, I just like that a little bit better. So that's interesting. It took a little bit of time to find, but there actually is a fingerprint mode. So just rest your fingerprint. Okay, fingerprints are both recorded. But before we test that out, just looking at the time on the fake phone, this is just something interesting to put in. Try to put in your local city and see if it finds it. For me, it's only coming up with Beijing, Taijin, Shanghai, and Shenzhen. So I try Los Angeles, it pops up but then it doesn't really pop up. But the clock is just a widget that's pre-installed. You can of course get rid of it, but on the S10 Plus, it obviously finds it. So that's kind of interesting. Let's see how well this fingerprint reader works. I'm gonna try it with my left thumb. Well, it, it unlocked with the wrong thumb. So I don't have a whole lot of hope. It just really works if you press in while you also lay your finger on the sensor or just screen. It works with basically any finger. So finger per reader, not really. And then on the S10 Plus, you just gotta kind of press in a little hard. It's still really responsive and fast on the S10 Plus. Bezels, no hole punch. How is the camera? Might as well find out, right? With the fake first, and then the real one. How do they stack up? Not too bad. The fake actually looks the best that I've ever seen, but obviously compared to the real one with the 10 megapixel and the 8 megapixel camera, that's gonna stack up. And then of course there's three on the back. So next up is the Instagram test where we basically record an Instagram story and then there's a mode where you can upload directly to Instagram stories through Samsung and Instagram's new collaboration. Compared to the fake phone, there is a convenient record button right next to the shutter, so. Let's just give this a whirl. So go check the quality out right after this video goes up. It's just TechSmart on Instagram. Let's see how these upload. So on the real phone, it automatically starts playing your video without audio, but you can turn that up. And then to upload it, you should hit this kind of triangle button. There's one on the fake phone at the top. Ooh, that's good. It says publish right to your Instagram feed. So one big telltale sign because of the Instagram Samsung partnership announced at the S10 event is this whole share to the feed or story mode. And this makes it super simple and also kind of helps polish off quality. It's not as good as an iPhone, of course, but it's not as Pixel 3 or even Google Pixel grade. And that's kind of what I was hoping for when I first jumped into the S10e. But what to look for if you're picking up a phone is this Instagram icon right here, and it will obviously say shares to story or feed. So if I hit story, automatically goes right in, cues it up. I don't wanna hear it, so you guys go vote what you think looks better compared to this. It just shares to the feed, 
instead of the story. So not totally off, but definitely a telltale sign. One big thing that I think is a clear giveaway with all fake and clone devices, especially of the Samsung origin, is these bezels. So if you guys missed it in the S9, how bad is it? I'll leave it right up there in the iCard. Same kind of setup, phone just looks a little different on the software side. We're gonna see how the speakers sound, and I think that's a good test to see if they've improved. I mean, obviously you're gonna need to answer calls if you still do that. I probably wanna play some music on YouTube Music, Apple Music, Spotify. So why not have a good playlist? All right, I'll leave it linked down below, the PBJM's playlist. It's updated every single Friday, and we're gonna fire it up on YouTube Music. Both looks pretty good. I mean, screen resolution on the clone, I'd say is no greater than 720p. It's not the best looking, it's definitely legible. Like, you can see what's on screen but it's no quad HD plus screen. Like the S10 plus blows it out of the water and you'd expect it, but it's not bad. I'd say maybe even 1080p. I think 1080p is safe to say, just looking at the pixels and you can tell up close that there's fingerprints on the phone, but yeah, doesn't look all that bad. We're gonna start off with the fake device first, see how that sounds. So full volume. Here we go, slushy. See what you got this week. Oh wow, that's louder than I thought it'd be, but not anything noticeable over previous years that's like worth mentioning to you guys. It sounds like a fake device. So let's see how the same song sounds on the real one. This should blow everything away, like microphones included. Sit tight, buckle up, it's going down. It's way better, but how much better? Definitely louder. Can't be terminated. Okay. Let's hear it. I think the phone's gonna break there. Wow, that sounds way better as you'd expect, but much louder than previous years. Like there's something up with these S10 speakers might just be the plus here, but they sound really loud, like way louder than I was thinking. The last test we're putting into all how bad is it's going forward is testing out how good the clone really is. So we're gonna be using the Geekbench 4 app. I know you're probably going off in the comments right now saying it's not the most accurate app. Sometimes manufacturers actually boost the metrics up because the phone knows it's running that specific app. So for specs, the one on the left has eight gigabytes of RAM. The one on the right should have at least one gigabyte of RAM, but that's where we're gonna find out if there's any surprises. So accept it, CPU benchmarks, okay. Android 9, four cores. So you see, they tried. They tried to get that quad core in there, but only one of the clusters is running. You guys just wanna see the score. That's kinda what I wanna see. Let's let this thing run, do its magic. This test is blowing the other phone away. This is the test we should have been doing from the start. Both Geekbenches have finished up and it's really telling just with this test and obviously why it's gonna be in every how bad is it going forward is how telling the score is between the real phone and the fake phone. So on the real Galaxy S10, we have a single core score of 4,500 and then a multi-core score of 10,673. 673 doesn't mean a whole lot, but compared to the fake phone, 415 on the single core and then the multi-core, which is the four cores working all at once. This is tech smart, right? A thousand. So not actually, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, the phone's usable as a fake phone, but don't expect to be gaming too hard, watching too many videos. I think you could maybe do one thing at a time compared to eight gigabytes of RAM, and that's what RAM really helps with. You can multitask and do anything you want. And with Samsung's DeX, you could plug the Galaxy S10 or any of the S10s in and use it as a computer. Imagine 12 gigabytes of RAM in that, Ev. Imagine. So to answer this video's question, how bad really is a $101 fake Galaxy S10 Plus? Pretty bad. I mean, for $101, you're getting sort of what you'd expect in a phone, but like most how bad is it, especially with the Galaxy S clones, it's not really that much. You're getting a phone that works, that can watch a little bit of YouTube, but with the Galaxy S10 Plus, what I really like about it is the full 6.4 inch screen, having that ultrasonic fingerprint built into the screen. It's pretty cool, and compared on the fake, it's there, but it's not keeping your device secure. So do these really compare up? Not really, just the price, and now you guys know if you are buying a Galaxy S10 on Craigslist a little early or at some point in the future, what to look out for, because these things really aren't changing. It's gonna take a little bit of time. We're close though.
Guys, that's it for this video. If you guys liked it, make sure to drop a thumbs, get subscribed if you're new, and join too to become a member. It's super cheap, and there's one bonus live stream in every single month that you don't want to miss out on. So that's it. I'll catch you guys next time.